to recognizing non-linear sequences. Just before we start, a reminder that there is a notes jotter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. Okay, so let's start by having a look at the sequence 7, 10, 13, 16, 19. Now, the first thing we generally do when we look at sequences is try to see if we can spot a pattern. And so in this one, I'm adding 3 to get from 7 to 10. To get from 10 to 13, I'm adding 3. To get from 3 to 16, I'm adding 3. And to get from 16 to 19, I'm adding 3. Now, what we can see here is that every single time, we are adding on the same amount. Now, if we add the same amount or subtract the same amount every time, that makes it a linear sequence. And so if the term to term rule is always just to add or subtract the same amount, it is a linear sequence. But what we're looking at today are the sequences where that does not happen. So let's have a look at this one. One, one, two, three, five, eight. Now, if we did what we've just previously done, and looked for a difference, well it would be 0, and then it would be 1, and then it would be 1, and then 2, and then 3, there doesn't seem to be much of a pattern in between. And the reason there's not much of a pattern is that this is a very specific type of sequence, and it is known as the Fibonacci sequence. And this is a sequence produced uh, where each term is made by adding the previous two terms together. And it will begin with 1 and 1. And so let's just have a look at that. 1 plus 1, well that is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. So if we were to continue that, I would have to do 5 plus 8. Well that would be 13. And then if I wanted to continue further, 8 plus 13, 21, and we could keep going on and on and on. But what you're more likely to see isn't the Fibonacci sequence, because the Fibonacci sequence must begin with the numbers 1 and 1. What you are more likely to see is a Fibonacci style sequence. And in these uh, sequences, um, it's still the same rule that we add together the previous two terms to make the next one. But you can start with any two terms values. So let's have a look at some of those. Fill in the blanks in these Fibonacci style sequences. 3, 4, 7, 11. Well first of all let's just check that it is a Fibonacci style sequence. Well 3 plus 4 is 7, 4 plus 7 is 11 and so next we're looking at 7 plus 11. Well 7 plus 11 would be 18. In the next one we'd have to add together 11 and 18 and so we would get 29. In our next sequence, we're starting with negative numbers. And so we have negative 3 and negative 2. Negative 3 plus negative 2 is negative 5. So next, we're going to have negative 2 plus negative 5. Well, that is negative 7. And finally, negative 5 plus negative 7. Well, that would be negative 12. In the third example, we've actually got um, a little bit of algebra in use. Um, and so we need to try to work out what the gap is, but this time the gap is actually between two terms. Now, the key here is that we know that A plus something makes A plus B. So what must we have added in order to turn A into A plus B? Well, we must have added B. Then in the next one, well, we can now say if we know that that is B, B plus A plus B, well, the A would still be as is. But B plus B, well, that would be 2B. Does that work for the final gap? Well, we had A plus B, and then we had A plus 2B. If I add those two together, what do I get? Well, A plus A would be 2A, B plus 2B would be plus 3B. And that is what was the next term in the sequence. And then finally, uh, we've got a sequence of something, something, 9, 14, 23. Now, we've been told that this is a Fibonacci style sequence. And therefore, we need to just check what is, uh, what is actually going on in order to produce the terms previous to that. Um, so let's just check 
9 plus 14, it does make 23. So the Fibonacci style sequence is working. But the question is, what must have been before this? And the key here is that the blank must uh, plus the 9 must make 14. So what do you add to 9 to make 14? Well, that is 5. Then, moving backwards one more space, we know that something plus 5 makes 9. So what must the first term have been? Well, the first one must have been 4. Okay, so next we're going to look at the sequence 2, 6, 18, 54, 162. Um, now, quite clearly, straight away, this isn't just adding on the same amount. We've gone up by 4, and then by 12, and then by 36. It's gone up by quite a lot every single time. Um, and so, uh, there must be a different rule as to how to move from one term to the next. And in this case, what we've actually got is a multiplication. We've multiplied by 3 to turn 2 into 6. We've multiplied by 3 to turn 6 into 18. We've multiplied by 3 and we've multiplied by 3. So every single time here, what we're actually doing is multiplying the previous term. Now, if that is the case where we are multiplying by the same amount every time, that is a geometric sequence. And so in a geometric sequence, each term is produced by multiplying the previous term by a specific value. And this number is called the common ratio, known as R. And so the R value in this would be 3 because every time we are multiplying by 3. So let's see if we can use that in this case. Fill in the blanks in these geometric sequences. Um, so in this case, the main thing here is deciding what the common ratio is. So in the sequence 2, 8, 32, what have I multiplied 2 by to make 8? Well, that is multiplied by 4. Does it also work in the next one? 8 times 4 is 32. So that is perfect. It's going to be a times 4. And so the next, we just need to do um, multiply by 4 again. So 32 times 4 is going to be our next, uh, next calculation. Well, 4 times 30 is 120. 4 times 2 is 8. So we're going to have 128. Then we're going to have to multiply by 4 again. 128 times 4. And if we want to do this a little bit quicker, we could double and double again. That's a way of times by 4. So if we double 128, we get 256. And if we double uh, 256, we get 512. So we've got there the sequence 2, 8, 32, 128, 512. In the next one, we've gone from negative 1 to 2 and from 2 to negative 4. Now this one is not quite so clear what we've actually multiplied by. How do I turn negative 1 into 2? Well I must have multiplied by 2 in order to turn 1 into 2, but to turn from a negative to a positive it must have been negative 2. Does that work for the second one? So 2 times negative 2, well 2 times 2 is 4, or it would be negative 4, so that has worked. We've multiplied by negative 2. And so, we just need to keep doing that. The next one will be negative 4 times negative 2. 2 times 4 is 8, and it's a negative times a negative, so that's going to become a positive. And then it's going to be 8 times negative 2. And 8 times negative 2, well, that's going to be 16, but it will be negative, so a negative 16. In the next one, we have A and then AB. Now, if I have turned A into AB, what have I multiplied by? Well, AB means A times B. And so we must have multiplied by B. And so we're going to continue that. We're going to have AB times B. And if I do AB times B, we've got B times B. That is B squared. And so that will be a b squared. If I continue that and do a b squared times b, well, it b squared times b would be b cubed. 
And finally, we're trying to find the gaps in this case. Uh, we've got 160, 80, something, 20, something. Now, in this case, the uh, values are actually getting smaller, which seems odd given that we are multiplying. Um, but multiplying uh, does not necessarily mean getting bigger. How do I turn 160 into 80? Well, that would be halving. And so what I've actually done is I've multiplied by a half. And so if I do the same again, if I do 80 multiplied by a half, well, I'm going to half the number. I'm going to get 40. If I multiply 40 by a half, I get 20. And so finally, if I multiply 20 by a half, well, that's going to be half of it. It's going to be 10. Okay, so let's have a look at the sequence 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. Now, if we look for our um, difference between each, 1 to 4 will be 3, 4 to 5 will be 9, 9 to 16 will be 7, 16 to 25 will be 9. Um, so they aren't going up by the same amount each time. But if we actually look at the differences between the differences, well, 3 to 5 is 2, 5 to 7 is 2, 7 to 9 is 2. And what you'll notice here is that the second level of differences are always the same. And that is very important for this particular type of sequence. If you have a look at these numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, you might actually recognise them. Um, they are the square numbers. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. And so this sequence is based on the square numbers. It is known as a quadratic sequence. Quadratic just meaning highest power of a squared. And um, in this one, the key element is that this second level of difference will always be the same. It will not necessarily be two, but it will always be the same value for each one. So let's see if we can use, um, uh, use that in some questions. So we're going to fill in the blanks in these quadratic sequences. So in our first sequence, we have 2, 7, 14, 23. So first of all, we want to see what the first level of difference is. Well, 2 to 7 is 5, 7 to 14 is 7, 14 to 23 is 9. And so they're not going up by the same amount every time, but the difference is going up by 2. Therefore, the next difference will go up by 2. It's going to go up by 11 next time. So 23 plus 11 is 34. The next time, it's going to go up by 2 again. And so the next one is going to go up by 13. 34 plus 13 will be 47. In the next one, you might notice that this sequence is actually decreasing. That's absolutely fine. We just need to make sure that we see what the differences are. So the first one, it's gone down by 16. Then it's gone down by 12. And so that difference there is 4. And so the next one, instead of going down by 12, well, it's only going to go down by 8. So 15 take away 8 would be 7. Next, instead of going down by 8, well, that's going to change. It's only going to go down by 4. And so 7 take away 4 is 3. If we keep going, the next one. We are trying to find what the first two terms of that sequence is. So something, something, 16, 29, 47. Now, again, we've been told it's a quadratic sequence, so we just need to check um, with this. Check what is happening between 16 and 29. Well, from 16 to 29, that's gone up by 13. And from 29 to 47, that's gone up by 18. And so the difference between the differences is 5. And so the previous one, instead of it going up by 5, it must have gone up by 8. And so 16 take away 8, well, that must mean that that one was 8. And then again, instead of going up by 8, this time it must have only gone up by 3. So 8 take away 3 gives me 5. So it's gone up by 3, and then 8, and then 13, and then 18. 
And in our last one, uh, we've got some decimals involved. It's gone 1, 1.5, 3. Okay, and so what is the common difference? Well, here, 1 to 1.5, that is 0 0.5. From 1.5 to 3, that is 1.5. And so the difference between the differences is 1. And so the next difference would also be 1. So that means 2.5. And so 3 plus 2.5 is 5.5. And a difference of 1 again gives me 3.5. And so 5.5 plus 3.5, well, that is 9. And so we're going to end with the exam questions. And these are from AQA sample papers. They're all foundation. And um, they come from a couple of different papers, but they are both on the same theme. So working out the next term of this quadratic sequence. So key here, you've been told it is a quadratic sequence. And that means that the difference between the values to begin with is going to be different. So 8, 12, 16. But the key is that the difference between those differences is the same. And so the next difference is also going to go up by 4. And so it's going to go up by 20, which means that the next term in the sequence is 40 plus 20. It's 60. The second part of the question is a multiple choice question. Which sequence is a geometric progression? Now, progression is just another word for sequence um, and the term geometric. What does that mean? Well, it means that each time it must multiply by the same amount. And so let's have a look at the different uh, different answers we've got. One, two, three, four. Well, in one, two, three, four, that's plus one, plus one, plus one. So that is a linear sequence. It's gone. Um, one, two, four, seven. Well, that goes up by one and then by two and then by three. And so if we look at the differences between those, that's one and one. And that means it's actually a quadratic sequence. It's gone. One, two, four, eight. Well, how do I get from one to two? I can either add one, but that wouldn't work for the next one. If I multiply by two, one times two is two times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8. There is my geometric uh, progression. Let's just have a look at the last one. 1, 2, 3, 5. Well, what sort of sequence is that one? Well, 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 5 would then be 8. That one's actually a Fibonacci sequence. But the answer to this one would have been 1, 2, 4, 8.